All right, so I thought I would make a little clip here just kind of explaining a couple of things uh, on my screen just to kind of not only solidify my own thinking, but also share what I'm doing with other traders who might be interested. So today was a pretty slow session. Um, it's 11.42 a.m. here, August 30th on a Monday. And um, there was some decent volatility in the morning, but overall pretty slow, not a lot of tradability in this market. But I wanna really demonstrate now for you a couple of these charts that I'm using and how they benefit me in what I'm looking for, okay? So a big part of how I trade is looking at the average volatility of how much the market's been moving. So like I wanna look at where the market has been recently trading and then how much it's moving away from that area and returning or where does it move and pause basically. And normally NASDAQ moves in ranges of five with an overshoot of two to three points. So if I can give you an example of that, let's say 68, five points up to 73, that's five points. Now, for whatever reason, let's say there's something contextually indicating to me that I wanna be looking for a long trade towards the upper end of the range. Well, there's two things I'm gonna look for. Number one is how fast and how the market is trading when it approaches the pivot. So if it just kind of shoots up to here, I'm not gonna wanna look for a long trade in that case because what normally happens in that case is it means the offers have been pulled, we've seen some buy stops get triggered, and then normally the market gets re-offered right back down. Whereas if the market, the opposite of that would be if the market is slowly bidding up and you see the current trades look like that, sellers hit the bid, uptick, sellers hit the bid, uptick, sellers hit the bid, uptick, and we're slowly inching our way up to that pivot, in that case there's actually a higher chance for a breakout. The next thing is, is I wanna look at the actual overshoot. So normally I'm thinking in about Let's say if, if NQ is moving in five point ranges, then the overshoot should be about half of that, no more than half of that. So really it's about two points to two and a half points. So for example, let's say you shorted at 73. Let's say you're looking to play the range that, and, and uh, get out back in the middle of the range. You do not wanna see the bid holding above the overshoot away from your pivot. So if your pivot is 73 and the overshoot is two or three points, you really don't wanna hear sellers hit the bid at 75 and 76 and the price continues to tick up. At that point, you know you're wrong on that trade, okay? So like little nuances like that is kind of what I use to uh, fine tune my entries and exits in trading. And uh, if you have any questions about it, just always, I'm happy to always discuss them with um, you guys. <laughs> Not all of you guys that is, but just a couple of you. So here's a couple of charts that I use. So I've got a one minute chart here because I realized that seeing a very basic candlestick chart is a great way of getting a lens into what the average trader is seeing in the market. So when you see very obvious candlestick patterns, I always watch the market and I look at the order flow once these candlestick patterns form and I wanna see how the market is reacting to that and where the market is going to seek the liquidity and this is actually something I used to do over a year ago. I used to look, have a candlestick chart next to my DOM, but I actually took it away as I was trying to fizzle out charts out of my trading. And I recently put it back because I had a few conversations with a couple of traders that kind of opened my eyes into a way of simplifying my own process. And this is one way of doing that, you know? So this is just basically a one minute chart. And I have an indicator on here from Sierra Charts, which is the variable open, high, low and close period. So I've set that to five minutes, meaning that it's showing me the highs and lows of five minute bars, while the time frame of this chart is a one minute bar. So that's just a handy way of seeing where five minute lows and highs are, because I know a lot of traders trade off of those. Um, yep, on this chart right here. Now, this is a very important chart. Um, and it goes in hand with the other footprint on my other screen over here. So this footprint on the left side of my screen is a time based footprint. It's five minutes of time. Now, there are times when it shows me exactly what I need to see and exactly where the market is trading. And I'm gonna give you a good example of that, where this footprint shows really the accumulation of trades that have been going on for maybe about a minute or so. And that's really I'm, all I'm concerned about. Um, because oftentimes in the current trades columns, you're not really seeing the whole accumulation of all the size that is traded there. And Sometimes, depending on when the market, sometimes the market's in a very slow condition, what ends up happening is there's a passive bid or a passive offer that's been sitting there 
kind of absorbing the size. Now, if you don't have a, a footprint on the side that's kind of accumulating that, you're not really giving yourself that insight, okay? And there was a lot of this, if you looked back earlier in the session. Um, first of all, um, let's see if I could find it. So, moved up, okay, so now let's say for example, right here, 78. Now look at these, look at this run right here. You can see that when the market traded down here, first of all, it didn't trade nearly as much volume as it did at 78. And it happens, it happens to be the approximate volatility away, which was about five points, right? Eights to threes, that's kind of how we were trading today. And you can see that the volume's lower and a lot of this is just sell stops, right? You can see minus 80, minus 50, minus 30. A lot of these are just sell stops that traded into the bid there, traded into passive limit orders. Now, if we go on and continue to watch, that's the first nuance. Now, on the way down, this was another great nuance right here. So, as the market came for rotation down, take out more sell stops. This is something I noticed right here. These trapped sellers into 571. Now, during this moment, the way these orders traded into this price, it really indicated that these were sellers that were kind of FOMOing into trades or panicking out of trades. They were very aggressive orders and they got caught into an iceberg that was not even showing on the bid. It just so happened that they got caught at that moment. The market traded very briefly down to 69 and then kind of slowly started to bid its way back up. And as it did that, I faded it back to this 77, eight area. Uh, that was a great idea for a fade. And what was the confirmation was this right here, these 100 orders that sold into that bid and you would have had to see how it played out in real time because just because you see a minus 100 doesn't mean you're going to fade that it's really about how it happened and and the context of how the market approached this area and uh, and that's pretty much it so there's always a number of factors that go into this and then look at again right here as we as the market rotated back up we still continue to see more sellers getting accumulated in in this area and unfair lows went up for a rotation higher and then that was pretty much the idea so really just keeping an eye on where traders are kind of getting trapped and and getting stuck is quite important and even when you're in a trade this can happen right you can buy a breakout for example let's say it happened to me today where i got into a momentum trade around 570 or something all of a sudden you see your order gets missed by one tick because i have a scalp order and my order got missed by a tick and then I moved it and then it, it seemed as though that other market participants kept on front running that order or basically it didn't want to let my order trade and that happens sometimes and that's a signal you get from the market basically it's telling you that there's some supply in this area and that they keep refreshing the offers um, so what I did was I actually scratched the trade after I saw a about a plus 200 on the micros and they were all on the offer right above my entry zone and then I started to see the price slowly start fading fading down. I just scratched it for about a three tick win or something. And that's simply because I saw buyers that were also trapped and I didn't wanna be trapped with them basically. So using these deltas again, it's just a way for me to kind of filter out um, when other traders are entering trades or getting stopped out of trades or when they're aggressively hitting the market or where they're getting kind of caught you know what I'm saying? So trading, a lot of a lot of it is about emotions and how traders are reacting to whatever the market is doing. So that's why I use these indicators like the delta and the velocity and the volatility to help determine how I should be trading and where I should be looking to fade trades, where I should be looking to get into some momentum, etc. All right, so I haven't really finished discussing the chart. So again, this five minute chart here, again, it's just a way of showing the accumulation of orders that are hitting the current trades. I use the current trades when I'm really reading the real time. When I'm really looking at that inside order flow, that's when I'm staring at the current trades in the delta. But when I'm being more meticulous and I'm looking at an area, then I'll look over here and kind of see what's going on contextually, how many traded here, how many traded there, etc. And over here, of course, one minute candlestick. Now, over here on the left side, this is another footprint chart. Now, what's interesting about this footprint chart is that it's rotation based and it's not based on time at all. So sometimes this can happen where we'll see accumulation at a price and for whatever reason, orders start coming in right after a five minute bar ends. And in that case, what ends up happening is your volume gets a little bit skewed on your footprint on your five minute bars because you get some volume on one bar and other volume on another bar. What this does, depending on how you set it, is it will only make a new bar once the market has reversed 
a certain amount away. And this is called a point and figure bar or a reversal bar. And um, I don't exactly know how it forms, but I do know that whatever you set it to, it needs to reverse by that amount before it creates a new bar. And it's really just a handy way of putting the market into a rotation based time frame, but it's not pure range bars either. It's rotation bars, meaning that when the market rotates back a certain amount, that's when it's going to form a new bar. That's the best way that I can explain it. But again, this is a great way of seeing the actual accumulated volume at your prices and seeing previous liquidity pools as well. Um, that's not any time based chart. So again, just kind of exploring the pros and cons of time-based charts versus non-time-based charts. And I think there's ups and downs to both of them. And it's important to know how both of them work in your market. And that's pretty much it over here. You know, I've got this other chart here, which I use for a daily chart or um, a larger time frame chart. So basically I just said to whatever context I think is important in the moment. So often, uh, I think I was looking at the Russell, yeah, I had it set to a daily chart for this chart book. Um, so basically you can set it to whatever chart you find most clarity here basically um, In this case 12 hour and over here 15 minute But normally I'll keep a one minute here for whatever market I'm trading just because that gives you a good indication of what your intraday participants are seeing and That's pretty much it guys. So if you learned something from this video Please leave a like and I'm happy to chat with you guys anytime. All right. Take care. Bye